Yo, what's up YouTube? In this video, I'm gonna be breaking down how I made over $150,000 sports betting in 2023. Now I know the year isn't over yet. We still have like a week left. So hopefully I don't lose it all, but I'm gonna be traveling a bit. So I decided to do this recap video now, but it wasn't all glamorous. I definitely had some down months, but regardless, hopefully, you know, still gonna end the year in the green. So what I love about sports betting personally is just like poker, it's one of the rare few forms of gambling where you can actually get an edge and win long term. That's why I started out with poker and then I actually became a sports better. Is you know, you're not gonna make money long term playing roulette, playing slots, playing blackjack. You're basically left with sports betting, poker, and trading, which are three things that I love. And anyways, this is all besides the point. But regardless, in this video, I'm gonna be breaking down you know, a bunch of things about 2023, the main sports books I had success on, which ones I made the most money on, prize picks, underdog, FanDuel, DraftKings, uh, the main sports I had success on, MLB, NFL, NBA, which ones were most profitable for me, as well as the main strategies that I've been using to make money. So I'm not saying these are the only strategies that make money, but I follow a very, very data-driven approach with strategies like arbitrage, positive EV, and middle betting. And these are things anyone can do. If you wanna make money sports betting and you're willing to put in the work, the time to learn profitable betting strategies, and actually every single day, you know, place these profitable bets, you will make money long-term. So without further ado, let's get into it. So first things first, this bet tracker that I use is called Picket, okay? Picket is a verified public bet tracker. It's really simple to use. You basically just connect your sports books, FanDuel, DraftKings, Caesars, Prize Picks, whatever books you use. It reads in all of your bets and shows you your profit and loss. They also have a bunch of different analytics. You can see your profit by sport, your profit by league. You can also even look up which players have won or lost you the most amount of money. So for example, example, this year, Kevin Durant is killing me. I'm down like $7,000. So there's a bunch of analytics on Picket. And long story short, like if you want to be a profitable sports better, you got to be tracking your bets. You need to know your results. It's again, very similar to being a poker player. If you play poker for six months, you go to the tables every night and you don't even know if you're up or down money, it's going to be hard to be a good poker player. But anyways, let's get into the basics of sports betting. And the first key to profitable sports betting is realizing that the market is extremely fragmented or inefficient, however you wanna think about it, right? When you think about the price of a stock, like Facebook stock, it's gonna be the same. If you go to Fidelity, E-Trade, Robinhood, you get the same price for Facebook. The market is very efficient. Whereas in sports betting, every single sports book sets their own odds, sets their own lines, so the prices are very different from book to book. And it may not seem like a big deal, but sometimes these discrepancies are really big, right? So if you take a look at this picture, you'll see that Atwell touchdown is plus 210 odds on BetMGM. So you're betting 100 to win 210 in profit. If you look on Caesars, it's almost triple. It's plus 600, betting 100 to win 600 in profit. So finding value in the market, just ruthlessly comparing odds from book to book is the first step to being a profitable sports better. This is called line shopping, which is a big word, but it's not that complicated. It just means comparing odds from book to book and trying to find value in the market. And that really is the first step to being a profitable better, right? If you're betting on Atwell to score a touchdown at plus 210 on MGM when there's another book that's literally just a tab click away. Sports betting is mobile, so it's just a tab click away. So you're getting plus 210 when you could be getting plus 600. You know you're getting ripped off, right? It's like if you're trying to be a trader and someone lets you buy a stock at 100 and another person is saying it costs $300. It's gonna be impossible to be an investor, a trader, anything, no different in sports betting if you're constantly getting ripped off. So finding value in the market, comparing odds from book to book is essential. It's the first step to being a profitable better. So I'm not sure how many other people care about this, but I think it's interesting and important. So I decided to include it in this video is profit and loss by month. So you'll see in November, bad month, I was down $18,000, but in October I was up $48,000. 
So sports betting can have brutal variants, especially depending on the strategy that you use. If you think about you know, investing in the stock market, you're either, most stocks are going up 2% or down 2% in a day. But in sports betting, when you place a bet, you either lose, you lose everything, or your bet wins. And this is very similar to poker. In poker, you'll hear about you know, the best sports, or the best poker players in the world having down months. It's no different in sports betting. Now, there are some lower risk strategies, such as arbitrage and middle betting. These are actually the two sports betting strategies that I started out using when I began sports betting like five years ago, pretty seriously, that are lower risk, lower return. So middle betting, for example, is when two sports books have such different lines from one another. Let's say FanDuel has a line at 60, 60 rushing yards for Derrick Henry. DraftKings is at 80. You hit the over on FanDuel, the under on DraftKings, and then you win both bets if Derrick Henry has like, you know, 70 rushing yards. So there are some lower risk strategies, arbitrage and middle betting, but in general, lower risk also means lower return. It's kind of like investing in the stock market versus bonds. Bonds, you never lose, right? You'll make money every single year if you're invested into bonds or bond funds, but the return is relatively low versus the stock market obviously has down years. You know, you think about the financial crisis, but over the course of history, the past 150, 200 years, the stock market has way outperformed bonds, going up an average of roughly 10% a year. Now, I also think sports betting by month is interesting because, you know, unlike trading a stock, sports betting, it depends on the sports calendar. Certain months, like November, have every major sport going on. NFL, college football, you know, college basketball is starting up. Whereas in the middle of summer, you basically just have baseball. So in general, the most profitable months are going to be when all major sports are going on, more sports means more surface area for books to cover, more games means more profitable bets. So in general, the best time to start sports betting and the most money you're gonna make sports betting is when a lot of sports is going on, right? November, December, months like that. So next, we can go through profit and loss by sports book. So in 2023, Underdog and Caesars were my two best books, over $90,000 in combined profit. Now I will say, a lot of that is variance. It's not like, oh, Caesars is just so easy to beat, right? The same way we discuss month by month variance. I was down in November, I was up in October. It's the same thing from sportsbook to sportsbook. Another thing to mention is different books have different max betting limits. So on Caesars, I can basically bet whatever I want. I've placed bets up to $10,000 on Caesars, whereas some other books like prize picks, once I started making money and they determined I was a profitable customer, they drastically reduced my maximum betting limit. So on prize picks, I can't even bet more than $25, which sucks, but that's just kind of how it is. Now, another thing I wanna mention is even if these books aren't in your state, that's just kind of how it goes, right? Every state, every location, every country has different sports books. So I'll have some people ask me like, oh, why don't you use Bet365? It's not that I don't think Bet365 is a good sports book to have, it's just not available, it's not legal in my state. So again, because all books have different odds, I recommend having as many sports books as possible that are available in your location. I've used over 50 sports books. My phone is a nightmare. Like I have 50 sports book apps. It's absolutely crazy. Every state has different sports books that are legal and all of these books have different lines. They also run different promos from time to time. A lot of these books have pretty lucrative new user signup bonuses. You know, you sign up, you deposit a hundred, you get a hundred for free easiest $100 you'll ever make. So I always recommend for new sports bettors, get as many books as possible that are legal and available in your location. So next we can go through profit and loss by sport and in 2023, as well as in 2022, my most profitable sport was the NBA. And I really do believe the NBA is the best sport to bet on. It's the most profitable sport. So don't get me wrong, I love the NFL, I love watching football, but there's just not a lot of games, right? You think about the NBA, there's tons of games. There's 82 games in the regular season. 
more games, more profitable betting opportunities, right? When it's a Wednesday, you're gonna be able to bet on the NBA. There's not gonna be any football on a Wednesday. So there's not gonna be any profitable betting opportunities. So another great thing about the NBA is there's a bunch of different markets. So there's a bunch of different player prop markets, for example, player points, player rebounds, assists, points plus rebounds plus assists. So more markets, more surface area for books to cover, more profitable betting opportunities. Now you may say, well, if more games is a good thing, why isn't baseball the best sport to bet on? And the thing about baseball is there's usually not a ton of discrepancies. And by that, I mean, even if a star player is out like Aaron Judge, it usually doesn't affect the odds much. Whereas in the NBA, if Giannis ends up sitting out or getting injured, that leads to a lot of discrepancies, line movements in the market, which in turn means profitable betting opportunities because the books are out of sync with one another. Next, we can go through profit and loss by bet type. So in 2023, and this was the same in 2022, my most profitable bet type was player props. So this may be a little surprising, but you gotta remember for a given game, right, like a football game, there's only one money line, but when you go into the player props, there's tons of options for player receiving yards, rushing yards, which player is gonna score a touchdown. So there's just a ton more markets available. And again, more surface area for books to cover means more profitable betting opportunities. So sure, I'll place a good NBA money line or spread bet from time to time, but most of the value, and oftentimes the best value, is in player props. So now we can get into the strategies that I I use to beat the sports books and make money. So I follow a very data-driven approach. A lot of people think, oh, if I'm a huge sports fan and I watch a lot of the NFL, I'll be a great NFL better. But that's not the case, right? That's like thinking because you use Facebook, you know what's gonna happen to the stock tomorrow. It's not that simple. Honestly, if you watch sports, you're probably a worse sports better because you're gonna be more emotional and not follow the data as closely. Okay, so I follow a very data-driven approach. The main strategies that I use are arbitrage, positive EV, and middle betting. And we could go through each of these strategies. Arbitrage is a form of risk-free betting, essentially because all sports books have different odds. Arbitrage is when two books get super out of sync and you can bet equal and opposite outcomes. In other words, the over on one book, the under on another book and guarantee a profit. You're hedging for a risk-free profit. That's arbitrage betting. And we have some tutorial videos on it on the Odds Jam YouTube. Then there's middle betting and positive EV betting. Again, the goal of this video wasn't to go deep into every single strategy, but I've done literally thousands of educational YouTube videos about profitable sports betting. And if you trust the process, you follow the data, you will make money sports betting. And as always, you can comment below with any questions. You can also reach out to me um, at any time. I'll include my email in the description. So thanks so much for your time.